It's cooking with Jackson and Libby. Yeah, cooking with Jackson and Libby. What was the best waffle you ever had, Molly? The best waffle I ever had was the first waffle that I had after I made this recipe for the first time. And what is special about this? Well, uh, these waffles are made with yeast instead of artificial, artificial leaveners like baking soda or baking powder. Okay, so what do we need to do to get started? To get started, first we have to get everything in order. So what I've done, and all of the amounts are in the recipe that you guys have, I've gotten our milk, our butter, the yeast, the salt, flour, sugar, vanilla extract, and eggs ready. Now there's a fancy French word for that. It's called mise en place. And it means to put in place, to put together. And one of the cool things that I really want to make sure that we convey in, in this series is little tips that you can use regardless of what you're cooking. And mise en place is one of those tips because whatever you're cooking, if you get organized first after you put on your apron, you put all your stuff together, it's going to make the process so much easier. And so when you start putting the uh, ingredients together and assembling them, it's easy and you don't have to go back and forth to the refrigerator or the pantry and measure it out. Yeah. You have it all measured out beforehand. It's all measured out ahead of time. And just to be clear, when I first started baking when I was a kid, I did not have cool little containers. I just put them in separate bowls. <laughs> so it's really simple. The other thing you want to make sure you do is get all of your uh, utensils out. So I'm going to use two different size whisks. I don't have to. One is going to be sufficient. Please don't lick the whisk yet. There's nothing on it. Um, and a rubber spatula. A pan. This is a small pan for heating milk and some butter. And then we're going to use a large bowl and a medium size bowl. So those are out here too. I also have some uh, cling wrap or saran wrap and um, our waffle iron, which we'll use in a little bit. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make some warmth for that yeast. This is one and three quarters cup of milk. I'm gonna pour it right in the pan. I'm using whole milk because I find that the recipe is just that much yummier. You're not gonna wanna eat a lot of these waffles. They're very rich. You may only wanna eat a quarter of a waffle, but the good thing is that most waffle irons let you easily figure out a quarter or a half and again, one of the things that we're going to show you later on is that these are waffles that freeze really well. So that means you can put them in the freezer and then put them in the toaster oven whenever you want the most delicious waffle you've ever had. True. I'm also putting in butter. This is a stick of butter, which I have cut into eight pieces and I'm using unsalted butter. This recipe calls for unsalted butter. And the reason for that is because when you use butter that already has salt in it, then it can make um, your baked goods much more salty than you really think they should taste. So it's always best to use unsalted butter and then you add a little bit more salt later, which is what we'll do. So now I've got the butter and the milk in this little pan. I'm gonna take it back to the stove, turn it on low, like a, a really low temperature, because we want the milk to heat up and the butter to melt we don't want to bring the milk to a boil. We just want the, everything to get nice and warm. And once the butter is completely melted, we're going to take it off the stove and we're going to let it cool for a while until when you touch it with a very clean finger, you, um, it, it just feels warm. We don't want the milk too hot because it'll kill the yeast. And we don't want it too cold because it won't wake it up. So we're going to uh, you melt use Persephone's the butter. Finger? No, Persephone's finger, I'm afraid, will never get clean enough to stick in the butter and milk. Thank you, Persephone. Thanks for wiping the sweat from my brow. Um, so the, so we'll be back in a minute when the butter has melted and the whole mixture has cooled down. Okay, it's about five or six minutes later through the magic of television. <laughs> Okay, the next step is to get all of our dry ingredients in the bowl. I'm going to show you over here. Yeah, so that's flour. There we go. And now I've got some salt and some sugar. Look at this. 
Sugar. Now that's not a lot of sugar in there. How much is that? No, I think it's just a tablespoon is my memory. So waffles, even though you get the idea that they're always sweet, it's really the syrup that you put on top afterwards. Exactly. So if you don't put a lot of syrup on it, they're not going to have too much uh, sweetness to it right. when you eat them. Now because I was a little concerned about the time, I actually put the sugar back in the refrigerator, which is not really a great idea because it ma makes it a little bit sticky, which is why I'm using a rubber spatula to get all of those dry ingredients in the big bowl. That last one was the yeast. That those was the, the yeast. Those are the uh, organisms. Yep. So now we've got this all in here and I'm just going to whisk it just to combine everything together. Okay. Now I'm going to take the milk. This is the milk that has five or six minutes uh, smoothed together. Now I'm going to add I'm gonna, we're gonna need to put that down flat, yeah. I'm gonna add the butter and milk mixture into the flour and yeast mixture. I don't know if you can see. So I'm gonna keep whisking this uh, butter and milk into the flour and yeast mixture until I don't get any lumps. And that's the key. It's going to be quite lumpy at first. In some recipes, you actually don't want, you want to leave a few lumps. This is not one of them. This we want to make nice and smooth. You mean recipes for other kinds of food? Yes. Sometimes in baking, you don't want to mix in the flour too thoroughly because you want to leave, because um, when you mix flour, when you beat flour like this, you're changing the way that it works in the recipe. And sometimes you want to let it be on its own and in this case we don't. We want to really mix it in there. So I'm going to scrape down the bowl, make sure we get all of that flour in that nice mix. Let me see if I can get this so that you can see it there. See how nice and smooth that is? That looks smooth. It looks really silky and shiny. So we're going to let that sit over here. And then I'm going to work on the wet ingredients because believe it or not, this waffle batter needs Are you done with some this? more. I am done with that. Thank you for cleaning up. It's always easy it is to easy. cook when you have a, an assistant who helps to clean up, right? Uncle it's very Joe? hard. Watch how I clean up. Again, the magic of television. All right. Because guess what happens later after the camera Persephone camera's comes in. <laughs> it's Persephone comes she, in. She's really good at cleaning. Yeah. Anyway. Where is she? Have you seen her? I don't know. I don't know where Persephone is. These eggs, we have two eggs. Whenever you are baking, use large eggs, not extra large eggs, not medium leg eggs, not small eggs, but large eggs because all the recipes are using large eggs. So I'm going to crack them. Now how do you do that without getting any shell in it? Well, years of practice. Really, that's the only answer. I used to get shells in my eggs all the time. Not only get them in every once in a while, and it's just practice. So in the beginning, if you start like getting shells in your bowl, don't worry, it'll get better. And it's just a touch thing that you'll be able to figure out the more you do it. So here are the eggs, two eggs in the medium bowl. And I'm gonna whisk them up with my smaller whisk. Then I'm going to take, the recipe is for a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I like to just use as much vanilla extract as my gut says to use. So I'm going to tip that into the bowl with the eggs and then whisk those together. So now we have a nice egg and vanilla mixture. Can you Ooh, see that? Yeah. See? So it's not as bright yellow anymore. It has that, that darker color in it. And what's again, what makes that darker color again? Well, the vanilla extract is a dark brown. Okay. And so when you mix that into the bright yellow eggs, it just colors them up a little as your dad, the artist, can tell you about. So now I'm going to put the eggs into the rest of the batter. And again, I'm going to use the whisk to mix those in. Now, remember how shiny that batter looked before? 
when I'm finished with this, it's going to look even more shiny. Okie dokie, that is well mixed. It's nice and shiny. It's got this beautiful cream color. I don't know if you can see that bubble shining in there. See how shiny and pretty? It's really silky. And that's because of, the, well, mainly it's because of the butter and the eggs. Butter's, butter makes things delicious and shiny. Yes. And even though we tend to use a lot of butter, it's for flavor. And then you just don't eat as much. Okay. So now we eat. No, oh, we don't. This next step is the critical step. This is sort of what makes it so special. Right. It's also why most people don't do this recipe because it takes extra time. But this time with so many things in the kitchen is well worth it. It takes extra time, but it doesn't take, it actually makes it easier when you're making the waffles. And it requires this. Saran wrap. Yes, why don't you put that Because what we're going to be doing there. is we're going to be covering this up, refrigerating it for how long? At least 12 hours up to 24. So what this does is it traps the little bit of heat that's in there still from the warm milk and then overnight while it's in the refrigerator, the cold of the refrigerator will slow the growth of the yeast. So that means you've got lots of time to let it sit, get big and puffy, and then tomorrow morning, take it out, mix it up, and put it in your waffle iron. So actually, Jess, Paul, there's no, uh, you can clean up everything the night before, which is really nice, and then you just have the batter in the morning in your waffle iron. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in the fridge and put this in, and oh my God, look what's in there. Again, the miracle of television. I thought ahead. She thought ahead. Anyway, here it is. This is what it looks like when it comes out. It's in a different size bowl. If we, this was a big production, we would have the exact same bowl, and then it would really be miraculous. So this is what it looks like. Don't tilt it too much, though. Even though you're trying to show everybody what it looks like. Yeah, right. So you see how there's this kind of... Um, puffy stuff around the sides, that's that yeast that's gone. And exactly. I need a whisk. Where's that so whisk? Then, um, I don't know. It's on those, it's on those things. There we go. So you can see the bubbles. And that's from all those organisms. And you made this last night, so it's been how many hours? I made it at 8 o'clock, and it's 3 o'clock now. So. Okay. so it's had its full 18 hours. And there it is. And now you're going to whisk it up. Now I'm going to whisk it up. See all those bubbles? Those are created by the gas. So what I'm actually going to do is deflate the mixture. So I'm going to whisk it up so that all of those bubbles are gone. The waffles, once you make them, you can put them on a, because um, the waffle iron will only make a few at a time. So a really good thing to do is to have a baking sheet. And actually, maybe you should get a baking sheet out. Okay. Um, a baking sheet with a silpat on it and turn on the oven to 200 degrees. And what you do is you have that ready, and as you make the waffles and they come out of the iron, you put them on the baking sheet, and then you put the baking sheet covered in the oven, and that keeps everything warm while you continue to make the waffles. Okay, that means that our waffle iron is heated up. It does. So. Um Take a look at the batter, and it's cool. You can do this, and it's really nice and rich and thick, and uh, it's gonna make really good waffles. So, take some uh, non-stick spray. <laughs> Persephone is now joined by Rue. It's, the more people in the kitchen, the better. Sometimes you say, too many cooks in the kitchen spoils the meal. Uh-uh, the more, kitchen, more cooks, the better in the kitchen. Anyways, take some no, uh, stick spray. This is some coconut spray oil. Spray a little bit, just a little bit inside of the waffle iron to make sure that it doesn't stick, even if it's quote unquote non-stick. And then we use a measuring cup. And that's not because we're trying to get exactly a cup, but it's just sort of easier to, um, to do. I think you actually want a cup. 
I think a cup will fill it okay. correctly. This is because of this is our this waffle iron. So right. And one thing to remember is that every waffle iron is a little different, and you might not put the right amount at the right time, or you might need it a little hotter or a little. Uh, cooler, so you might need to adjust your temperature a little bit when you do your waffles. But you never, um, the first waffle out of the batch is probably going to be what I call a test waffle. This is Rue, by the way. She's one of our dogs, and whenever something starts cooking in the kitchen, she comes in and asks. If she and can this come is in. Kanga. Oh, Kanga's here too. So, Kanga, Rue, Persephone. Molly, Jim. As I said, the more cooks in the kitchen, the better. Absolutely. Right, Roo Roo? Roo believes it. <laughs> okay, Kanga. She thinks it smells good. So, I don't... <laughs> Kanga's like, I want up, also, I want up. always remember that after you hold your dog in the kitchen or pet your dog or let your dog lick your fingers, you should always wash your hands. Which is what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know if you can see on this camera the, the, the steam rising from the waffle iron a little bit. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, so that steam is indicative of the fact that there's heat going on inside and it's creating this beautiful environment for the waffle to cook in, to sear on the outside, to get a little brown on the outside, but soft and chewy on the inside. And that's really what makes these yeasty waffles so delicious. You can see that steam coming off the waffle iron. So that tone means the waffle iron the says waffle the waffle iron is says ready. The waffle's ready and it, and it looks is. Ready. Look at how beautiful that is. Now I'm going to use a fork to lift it up because it's all done. So you see, for our waffle iron, one cup gives you a full waffle that's got the whole shape. It looks great. Great. It's okay. a perfect waffle. Let me show you on this camera. There you go. <laughs> There you go. We're still learning our camera work here. It's our <laughs> first time. So we're going to continue this. We're going to make the, um, I'm going to make the next waffle and Molly's going to put that in the oven. And then when all the waffles are made, we'll show you what's next. In a moment, we're going to be getting the whistling of the waffle iron, which says that the last waffle is ready. And that means that we're ready to eat. So this is it. Okay. So in terms of the recipe, our waffle, iron makes one, two, three, four and a half. <laughs> okay. I ate half. Okay. So it would make five waffles, which is a lot of waffles for everyone in the family. Here is that half a waffle that uh, I was showing you. So in order to really enjoy a waffle, you want to um, spread a little butter on it like this. And this is softened butter that has been out. And we like uh, maple syrup. This is 100% uh, maple syrup. But tell, I'm sure you have some interesting stories about maple syrup coming from New England. I think everybody knows how delicious maple syrup is and that it's important that you actually eat maple syrup instead of what they call breakfast syrup. Yes. And I won't even tell you that before I met Molly, I didn't have that appreciation. I always thought maple syrup was very expensive and it is very expensive, but it's one of those things that like this pretty much lasts us a year this size and you can get it at those big box stores. It's so worth it. And you so, might not find, you might, this might be un, more than enough butter. That's probably a lot of butter for what's in the, already in the recipe. You might not need that much. Do you like your waffle? Mm -hmm. Would you like some? I would like some. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. That is so good. So that's, that's all there is to it. What's cool is that with these waffles that you have left over here, so you can put these, as soon as they're all cool, put these in a Ziploc bag. And you do want to cool them down, not piled on top of each other. Right. They, first of all, they don't cool evenly. There's still a little warmth where the waffles are touching each other. And any moisture that's left on the outside of the waffle will make it more likely to stick to, e to each other when they're in the freezer, freezer bag. bag. So separate them and put them in a freezer bag, put them in the freezer. And then when you want to waffle anytime, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, even sometimes breakfast for dinner is really yummy. You can just put it in the uh, toaster oven or the toaster for a short toast cycle. You don't have to make it real brown because they're already naturally brown. You just basically want to refresh them and warm them up and uh, you can have 
yeasty waffles anytime. It's true, and they keep in the freezer for about a month, I'd say. I wouldn't go longer than a month, um, but they do keep for a full month, so a bag will last you. Chances are you wouldn't even want to go a month. They won't last that long. Yeah. That's it, Jackson Libby. Thanks for letting us cook with you. Thanks. We'll see you in the next video. It's cooking with Jackson and Libby. Yeah, cooking with Jackson and Libby.